Hello, everyone. Today we will talk about the first stages of a business email. Salutations, greetings, subject line, and opening line. This is the first video in the email series, and more will be coming up. So stay tuned. In writing, including business writing, we begin with a salutation first, from informal to formal. Chris, hi Chris, hello Chris, dear Chris, dear Mr. Gu, dear Mr. Chris Gu, or dear Chris Gu, when you don't know the gender or which one is the last name. The first few you could probably use among colleagues or even to your boss if you have been working together for a while. In more formal situations, we would have to use dear. Please note that we couldn't say dear Mr. Chris, which means dear Mr. First Name. We could only say dear Chris, which means dear first name, or dear Mr. Gu, which means Dear Mr. Last Name, or Dear Mr. Chris Gu, which means Dear Mr. First Name, Last Name. Let's also talk about the differences between Miss, Mrs., and Ms. Miss is a title used for unmarried women. Mrs. is a title used for married women or widowed women. And Ms. is a title when you do not know the marital status of the person, which means you don't know whether they got married or not. Using the wrong title might offend some people, so choose with care when you choose the salutations. When unsure, I would use Ms. Let's also talk about the subject line. The subject line is what the reader would read first, so it is crucial that you write clearly and in a concise manner. This is usually a six to eight word summary of what your email would be about. So people could decide whether to read your email or not. So here are some good examples. Corporate training on December 21st, 2020. Reply needed by Friday on hotel room reservation. Lisley language class, register today. Cover up your desks for office sanitization. Keywords would be sufficient for a subject line, not full sentences. Some people like to add an opening line in their email or letter. Hope you are doing well. Hope everything is well with you. Hope this email finds you well. Note that we can also add an I in front of hope to make it sound more formal. I hope you are having a great day. I hope you are having a great week. We could also use, I hope you had a great weekend. Some people use this, but some people think it's too personal. If you don't know the person, they would think, why do you care about my weekend? Some people omit the opening line and dive straight to the point. The next sentence of your email or your first sentence of your email without the opening line should state the purpose of the email. This is usually done by the following sentence pattern. I am writing to plus a verb. So for example, I am writing to inform. I am writing to complain. I am writing to request. Or I am writing to inquire. An informal expression would be, I am reaching out to, and reaching out means contact. This is usually a way to start a letter or an email, clearly stating the purpose in the beginning of the email for the reader's convenience. So imagine if you're working at a customer service department of a hotel, you would be receiving tons of emails every day from existing guests and also potential guests. So stating the purpose of the email in the beginning of the email would help the reader to understand who they should refer the email to or how to resolve the problem. For example, 
If the email begins with, I am writing to complain about my stay at your hotel, you would forward it to guest services. But if the email starts with, I am writing to make a reservation for a deluxe room, then you would be forwarding this to the reservations department. This is quite important because as I understand, in Korean, sometimes we would say the context first and then the conclusion at the end. But in English, conclusion comes first. Conclusion comes first, okay? So not only in speaking, but also in writing. I have told this to my students many, many times, and they usually say, I worked until midnight last night, and I couldn't wake up this morning. Sorry I missed your class. Or, my daughter is sick, so I have to take her to the doctors. Sorry I will be missing your class. Sometimes I actually get a lot of text messages, and when I'm really busy, it would be much better for me to see, I missed your class this morning because I worked until midnight last night and I couldn't wake up this morning. Or, I will be missing class today because my daughter is sick and I have to take her to the doctors. Do you guys understand? It is much clearer to state the conclusion in the beginning. One final thing about the beginning of a business email, it doesn't always have to start with I am writing to. It depends on whether you're giving good news or bad news. If the person is giving good news, and you could easily find this in college acceptance letters, it would say, I am delighted to inform you that the admissions committee has admitted you to the class of 2020. I am happy to inform you. I am pleased to inform you. It is my pleasure to inform you. Inform is a formal word for tell. So back in the day when we got our college acceptance letters, it would be a letter like this. And then we would just try to peek through it and read the first line. And if we see the first line, then it would be like, ah, or it would be, oh, like this. So you would know by reading the first line whether you got accepted or not. I guess nowadays, college acceptance letters come through email. So just reading the first line, you would understand whether you got accepted or not. If the person is giving bad news, they would say, I regret to inform you that. I am sorry to inform you that. We regret that we could not process your application. So again, in both good news and bad news, the first line would state the purpose of the email or letter. So today we went through the basics of an email, salutations, greetings, subject line, and opening line. Thank you. Thank you.